part two of Sports Hernia. Hello, my name is Dr. Greg Mancini. I'm Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. This is a lecture on sports hernia, the evaluation and treatment of said disease. This is about a 15-minute lecture based on a uh, series that I am putting together called uh, Complex Hernia Issues. Well, as I've described, the pain and the uh, rest required associated with healing process can be a very difficult uh, treatment plan for an individual uh, to take. And so we spend a lot of time counseling uh, patients, family members, coaches on what the diagnosis is and what the right treatment plan is and trying to set a realistic expectation about the goals and timelines for proper repair and recovery. And this feels quite, uh, quite uh, difficult. Um, and uh, as a surgeon, I really work to encourage compliance with the treatment plan because a person may do four weeks of rest and on their own return to activities and have a very early re-injury, setting them back even further. And so, you know, we have pain and activities that seem to be really pushing on our patient. You know, the pain is keeping them from doing their activities. Their activities they desire to do or they feel a duty to complete their activities. And the patient is there in the middle feeling squeezed by this. So it's important as the surgeon to explain the importance of following the treatment plan really for them to have their best chance of returning to full activities. So once they uh, agree to be evaluated, or my goal is to really do a full evaluation to optimize the proper diagnosis, because proper diagnosis is giving our best chance to get the right therapy. And so we're going to build that treatment plan and our rehab plan based on proper diagnosis. So let's talk about how a general surgeon like myself may uh, provide operative therapy for the sports hernia. Well, for the true hernia and osteopubis and abductor longus tendonitis, hip and femur injuries, nerve entrapment, and iliwingal floor weaknesses are our diagnosis that make up sports hernia. And on all of them, we'll improve with operative therapy. But let's go ahead and look at what some of those operative therapies might look at. So we'll start here in this column all in blue. There's our diagnosis that we had on the last page. And what is our first line treatment therapy for each of these? And what's our second line therapy as well? So this, I'm going to spend most of my time going over the treatment algorithm that I employ in our practice here at the uh, hernia center at UT Medical Center. So for true hernias, we're going to fix those patients. I typically would do a laparoscopic hernia repair with mesh, have a uh, four to six week recovery period followed by physical therapy after that. If patients return to physical activity, uh, and then have the inability to fully return, I'm going to reevaluate them for pot potential hernia recurrence and uh, consider operative repair. What about osteitis pubis? Well, for those patients, it's going to be the six weeks to six months of NSAIDs, rest, and rehabilitation. What's our second line therapy for this? Unfortunately, this is an inflammatory and chronic process, and surgery does not help this as based on our current data. So once again, it's NSAIDs, rest, and rehabilitation. How about adductor longus tendonitis? Similar to osteitis pubis, it's going to be NSAIDs, rest, followed by rehabilitation. There have been some second-line therapy interventions of doing an adductor longus release. Uh, this is oftentimes done by experienced sports hernia surgeons or orthopedic surgeons that specialize in this. It's not commonly done, by, uh, commonly done routinely. What about nerve entrapment syndromes? We most often diagnose these with our, our diagnostic blocks, and often those diagnostic blocks can be therapeutic. By interrupting that nerve fiber firing, we can oftentimes stop that nerve conduction and return them to a painless scenario. But for some patients that have that in nerve entrapment, an open hernia repair uh, with uh, uh, pr preservation of the nerve or uh, if the, there is a clear nerve injury or neuroma, uh, the nerve can be resected and buried into the uh, muscle belly. What about hip and femur injuries? This is where I need the assistance of my orthopedic surgeon. 
Um, and if uh, they come back to me and they still have hip and femur injuries, unfortunately, my next uh, call is going to be back to my orthopedic surgeon to try to work on those therapies. What about ilioinguinal nerve floor, or what I call our inguinal floor weakness? For these patients, we're going to try them on NSAIDs rest and rehabilitation. If an individual can return fully to activities uh, after that period of time, uh, we're great, we're good. But if they have failure, uh, what I'll offer for those patients is reinforcement of that floor with an operative hernia repair. So that's my treatment algorithm as I see these diagnoses, which is based on the uh, published research data uh, available. That is my talk on sports hernia, the treatment and evaluation process. I hope that's been helpful uh, for you and for your uh, patients. Uh, if there's anything further, what I'd like to do is continue the hernia series and look for further uh, publications. Thank you, Wendt.